and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so we're going to do a, a quick unboxing and review of the uh, the motherboard that's going into this powerful little rig that we're setting up. Now, one thing to note is that uh, a lot of ITX systems are, are, are set up to be pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, you know, there are motherboards... Uh, you know, with regular normal chipsets, you know, things like that for small form factor builds for uh, media center, uh, PCs, uh, you know, DVRs, things of that, things of that nature. But a lot of them as well are set up to be, uh, you know, very cool uh, for gaming. So we are using the, uh, the, the Asus uh, ROG for uh, Republic of Gamers, uh, Strix Z590i gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Um, this is uh, really a, a little powerhouse board, and like everything else in this system, it is it is quite quite dinky, uh, which surprises me because you know I, I've been wanting to do one of these for quite some time, and the more I dig into it, uh, the more surprised I am by you know how physically small these things are. So without any more ado, let's uh, let's get at it real quick. Let's open the box up. Let's see what we got inside. So we open these up, and of course we've got the, of course we got the board. Pop this guy out. Set him aside here for just a moment. Let's see what else we got. Okay. In the box here, we've got the we've got of course the manual. Uh, we've got the card. Let's see what is this member of elite gaming community level up with uh, armory crate. Okay, so it's it's the uh, it's their app to be able to set up all your RGB and, and do different things with. Um, you get these uh, you know kind of cool stickers. Uh, for cable management and things like that, or, uh, you know, for those of you that like stickers, you can put them, you know, all over the case and do what you like with it. Get a cool, uh, uh, what is this? Key ring. So, a little keychain. Keep your stuff with you. You've got the antenna for the antenna for the Wi-Fi. Uh, a couple little hardware packs. Uh, this guy right here is, uh, I believe this is going to be the, the little dongle. That you get four. Ah, yep, it sure is. You get this nifty little guy here. Okay, which is for, you know, hooking up your hard drive LEDs, your reset buttons, and so on and so forth. Something to, you know, kind of jump you from the board to, to where you need to be uh, a little bit easier. Okay, we've got a couple of, uh, a couple of packs of SATA connectors. Uh, some zip ties, a couple screws for the M.2 drives, and then that's kind of that, that's kind of it. Um, oh, sorry, we got one one more thing in here. I almost forgot. You get this this nifty little guy here too, which is uh, this is a USB adapter. Okay, so this will allow you to plug into a USB 2.0 port, and then uh, be able to plug two USB things in. So if you've got uh, if you've got a pump that needs power, um, you know, or something else like that, you can definitely uh, you can definitely use this, and that'll help help save you space and and woes when setting these things up. Now, let's look at this little guy. This is <laughs> this is really cool. This is really cool. If we look at the size of this thing, and you know, just like the power supply, there's my meat hook, and uh, you know, it is. It is really, really a nice, nice piece. It's got some weight to it. Um, it's got, you know, nice heat sinks over the M.2 drive slots, uh, which we'll show you here in just a second when we kind of go around this board. We'll see if we can adjust the camera a little bit. All right. So, starting at the bottom and working our way around, shall we? So this is the uh, Z590 chipset. Okay, which means that this will accept current generation Intel 10th uh, generation chips as well as the Rocket Lake stuff that's not even out yet. So it's actually really pretty cool because you've got a little bit of expandability into this. Now, 
this board does support PCIe 4.0 in the M.2 primary or in the primary M.2 configuration and also in the PCI slot here as long as you've got the 11th generation chip installed. So thus at the time that we're making this video uh, you know those chips aren't available so everything will run according to ASUS I, I talked to them on the phone and they said that your uh, M.2 drive will run at 3.0 speeds with a 10th generation chip there, there's no reason that it will not run or operate um, you know it'll just do it at 3.0 speeds depending on the processor that you've got installed okay so right here we've got a we've got a USB header uh, we've got a we've got a fan header. We've got front panel audio. We've got uh, five volt uh, RGB. Okay, along with your PCI slot. Okay, we've got two two slots for memory. This board will support up to sixty four gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so kind of look at this from an overhead view before we go on. It's got this very large heat sink and heat pipe setup over the uh, over the VRMs okay and this also has an integrated fan to help cool keep everything cool uh, this is a eight eight plus two phase power uh, going to the going to the CPU and the board so keep everything stable and uh, like I said it's got this really really cool heat sinks and heat pipe set up over everything that uh, uh, the transistors and, and you know things like that that are gonna get super hot all right so here we've got we've got four four SATA connectors. We've got a USB uh, 3.0 front panel connector. We've got a USB Type C panel connector. Uh, looks like we've got another USB port here. Our 24 pin power. We'll give it a quick turn, and we've got uh, your AIO uh, cooler header as well as a CPU fan and another uh, RGB header here. Now, this does take a single 8-port power, and, uh, you know, we'll support the uh, the latest i7 central processors. Now, let's turn this guy around here and see what we've got. All right, so as we're looking at it from this side, we've got one, two, three, four USB 2.0 slots. You might ask yourself, say, ET, you know, this is... You know, this is 2021. What do we need so many 2.0 slots? Well, you know, you've got keyboards, you've got mice, you've got, uh, you know, maybe webcams, you know, things like that that don't necessarily require the speed and transfer abilities of, uh, you know, of 3.0 and above. Okay. We've got your HDMI port for your uh, Intel integrated graphics. Uh, we've got a uh, BIOS <coughs> flash button here. Uh, as well as a, a slot specifically for that for a for a thumb drive, uh, you can read about that in the in the manual. Uh, USB Type C connector, uh, USB um, 3.2. I think this is Gen 2. Is the red one, which is the the 10 gig the 10 gigabyte transfer uh, network connection at 2.5 gig. Okay, we've got onboard. Uh, Thunderbolt support with a Type-C connector, and we've got the USB 3, uh, 3.2, I think it's Gen 1, okay, which is the which is the 5 megabit, and the red is going to be the 10 megabit. Uh, we've got your, your outputs for your Wi-Fi, and then, of course, your mic, uh, speaker, and, and, and other line-ins. So, that's everything in a nice, neat little package. Now, you'll notice back here on the back, pretty plain, pretty simple, not a lot to look at. The thing is with this board, it does support two M.2 slots, or two M.2 drives. The nice part is, and one of the reasons that I went with this board was because a lot of the other smaller gaming-oriented boards would put one of the slots on the back side here. And if you ever needed to change that drive or do something else, you know, when you've got a system already built, as some of you may know, it's kind of a nightmare if you don't have any, you know, if you don't have a cutout on the case to be able to to get it. Then you've got to disassemble everything and take the motherboard out just to change the drive. Not very fun. Okay. This one here, they are both here on the top. Now on top of all of that, this thing does have an RGB setup on it. Okay, this little guy right here, 
okay, those little pins, those are for the header. So when we get the screws out, you got to be careful when you lift this top plate off and when you put the top plate back on that you get those in the correct location. Okay, because otherwise you'll bend them and then you're kind of SOL. So, anyways, like I said, let's uh, let's go ahead and get these out. So, now, as soon as this one comes loose, you know, you don't necessarily have to take it all the way out. Okay? You can if you like to, but you don't have to. Now, remembering those pins on the back, right, we can't just pick this up because this is in the way. So, we got to kind of push this this way and out. So it slides back out of the way, just like that. And we'll set this on the side. Now we're free and clear. We can just take the top cap, we can give it a little wiggle. And those pins will just pop right out of there. Okay? And you can see that they are pretty gosh darn long, those guys. Right there. So they would be fairly easy to bend if you're not careful. Also, uh, they give you pre-applied um, you know, thermal pads on the tops and bottoms of these, you know, so, uh, now, at this point, a couple of things, okay, you've got a ribbon cable that goes to the motherboard here, which is going to attach everything, this is in there, this cable is pretty gosh darn stiff, so you got to kind of, you got to kind of persuade it a little bit, but you got to persuade it evenly, just like that, so you kind of, it kind of gets in the way of the you know, of the RAM hanger over here, which doesn't move out of the way, it was just kind of a pain in the butt. Now, the other thing to be careful of is that under here, there is another connector, okay, similar to this. So you've got to be careful when you take this apart and put this back together, you know, so once you get it to this point, you've still, you kind of got to lift up on the front end and give it a little wiggle. Okay, think, and then she'll come out. Now, here on this little exposed portion this is the other connector uh, I wanted to show you something that was really actually kind of cool now uh, this case uh, you know that I've got the uh, uh, the cooler master case actually comes with this nifty little tool okay that I'll show you here and this tool is intended for installing the uh, uh, the standoff screws in the bottom of the case it's a little socket so to speak with a with a flat with a Phillips head screwdriver on it now this just so happens to, if you've been using it in a magnetic screwdriver, it kind of wants to stay put. But it is the same size as these little suckers right here that got to go in for your NVMe drive. Bingo! Just like we knew what we were doing. Okay, so now we can take this guy and put him right there and just give it a little bit of light love. Kind of a 45 degree angle and she'll drop right in. Nice little click. And go down, it'll line right up there. This we should be able to do. Put that there. Get a screw in. Bingo. Let's not forget. We've got to take the tape, we've got to take this off of here so this drive transfers heat. Because so I'll tell you this much, those little suckers get hot. Very much so hot. Okay, so we'll get that on there. And we'll snug these guys up. Bada bing, bada boom. And we'll repeat the same process for our second drive. Like I said, you don't want to put too much, just give it a little, just give it a little snug with your fingers. So it's only got to stay put. It's not like this thing's going to be going off roading or anything like that. So, there we go. We'll remove that and get him out of the way. Then we will do the same thing here. We will install our NVMe drive. Oop, little click. She goes right in. 
close that guy down perfect fit okay gorilla fingers go yeah yeah perfect Ta -da -da. now for the top one now it's going to be a little bit more so on the fun side because we got to put this together and then you know make sure that we get uh, our little pins lined up here on this header okay get our extra long screw through the hole get everything lined up get the other one through into this hole uh, and get this put back in so because there's going to be a little bit of fumbling uh, i'll be back when i get the lower section put on and, and we'll show you how we do the rest once again we're putting this back together in reverse order so the very first thing that we did was we installed the baseboard or, or you know the baseboard itself making sure that the uh, that the little tang that goes up inside of here that I showed you that that popped on into place it popped on into place real nice and easy it wasn't real difficult to get into place um, at that point we're going to uh, you know reattach uh, you know reattach the the header here I'll show you it'll give you a little bit more light okay now we're gonna re we're gonna reattach the header cable at the back okay and and then from that point we're pretty much square so all you got to do is when you put the top plate on, I turn this around the other way so that I can watch when I install the top plate to make sure that my pins, you know, that the pins go right into place where they're supposed to. So does the pins lined up, I just gave her a little love push, bink, it popped right in. There was a little, you know, there, there was a little textile feel to it, uh, you know, telling me that everything was lined up right. At that point, we'll go ahead and start with the uh, with the long screw okay start with the long screw and you want to make sure that you get this screw down until the point where it starts to get snug you want to hold your screwdriver with two fingers like this you don't want to you don't want to reef on it you know you're not trying to tighten a radiator hose here you want to just you know just a little bit of dexterity so you want to tighten this up until it gets snug and back it off like a half turn then you want to go with the next longest screw which is going to be this one here and you would do the same thing. You would in, you would install it, um, you know, tighten it up until it just gets snug, and then back it off a half turn. Okay, and that leaves just this one, which which holds this cover plate. If you remember correctly, when we took it apart, this cover plate kind of has to, you know, go under here and then slide in. The other thing is with the tape is that now with the drive in there, it's a lot thicker. So you've got to actually kind of compress this. You got to push down on this with your finger in order to get this to stay in place. Um, then when you get the third screw in, you know, then it's just a matter of going through and snug it up, snug it up, snug it up, you know, until everything comes down nice and even, nice and flat. You're not going to, you're not going to warp or pinch anything and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So at this point, uh, we're, we're going to call this section of the video done. You know, we will be, uh, we will be back with, uh, you know, uh, chip install, RAM, uh, installing this into the into the case, the cooler, all that stuff. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a complete build. This is going to be basically part, uh, you know, part one in the series. This is the end. This will be the end of part one. We'll go on to part two later. Okay. So once again, I thank you for watching. Uh, once again, thank you for supporting the channel. This is KBZ Gaming. Uh, also going to be KBZ Tech. So uh, definitely drop us drop us a like and uh, subscribe hit that notification bell so that you can you know keep up on uh, the progress as we go through this and get everything done and installed and uh, we will we will go from there once again thank you very much have a great night